All right. So this arrived today. It is a big, scary looking box, but uh, not that scary. It contains a 3D printer called the Cetus 3D. Uh, it comes from a Kickstarter that I backed. Uh, I managed to get this, the printer for, for $200. Regular price is $300. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at it. I'm just gonna do a very quick unboxing because there's a couple things that I just wanna show, like this letter here, which has my name on it, which is kinda cool. So yay, as a Kickstarter backer, I get a, they send me a letter, hooray. All right, see what else is inside. Ha, huh. so it turns out they're looking for unboxing videos. Well, what do you know? The printer itself comes mostly assembled. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, basically the big box you'll see is about the same size as the printer itself. Uh, then we got the goodie box, which I'll dig into. Let me get this off the table so I get better lighting. So a bunch of goodies, a bunch of PLA, three nice colors. I'll dig into that. Looks like I got my extra build plates here, which is great. Yeah, I got my three build plates, perfect. Power. Another small box. Hey, it's got my backer number on it. Very nice. Okay, inside here, we got a bunch of bits. We got the uh, extra nozzles in here, three nozzles. We got the print head, which I recall has should have the nozzle in it. All right, so there's the print head. Yep, it's got the nozzle in there. I'm assuming it's the 0.4. Don't know for sure. I'll have to double check. So we got our, head, our print head. Very good. Spatula. Got to have a spatula for getting things off the bed. For our tweezers because you always need to cut things. It's also got the the flat side to it because that's important. So extra piece of metal for building a uh, spool holder and USB cable. Nice and tiny compared to the box it came in. Of course, it's smaller than the box. Yeah, for the most part, just need to attach the uh, the head over here, put the build plate on this guy over there, plug in a few wires, and uh, should be good to go. Now, I'm not sure why this is the case, but the screws that attach the build plate, uh, we got a couple that, are, that stick out, and this one that's recessed. Not really sure why that is, but either way, I guess we'll use the ones that stick out, because I'm assuming this must be a structural screw of some sort. Because I was curious, I pulled out all the screws. Yeah, it looks like the one screw that was in this recessed hole here uh, is actually shorter than the rest, so it's clear that that one should not be removed. As you can see, we uh, left this little hole there, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, the one screw was too short to, to do this, so not going to mess with this. It looks like this is the way this is intended. So we have that. Uh, you'll also notice there's some scuffs and marks on this build uh, plate. A couple over there, there's a line over here. So this looks like this was the plate that they used for the QA testing. So at this point, I decided to go ahead and plug it in and hook it up to my laptop uh, so that I can do to initialize on it. Uh, because what I would like to do is just to raise the raise this arm here up a little bit. So let's... Uh, Let's do the init. I've gone ahead and installed the software, uh, activated it. So, theory, once I hit OK, it should start, it should come to life. Oh. And of course, once it uh, gets to the top there, I should be able to attach the printhead. Shouldn't fall. Okay. All right then. Okay, great. Let's hook up the print head. Connecting the head was a little tricky because of course, uh, we got this guy here in the way. So what I ended up doing was using this long line, in the long form, put the little screw in the end here, kind of slipped it in like so, and then tightened it just a couple of twists, and then fed this through the other hole and then twisted it straight through like that. And that looked to be a pretty straightforward way to get this uh, hooked up. And hooking up the rest of it was pretty easy too. Just plug in the ribbon cable like so, feed the slippery tube into that hole and uh, into that one over there. So now it sticks out above slightly. Not so bad, not so bad. The printer itself is more or less ready to go. So what I would like to do next is put together the spool holder. Uh, comes with a number of parts. We of course have these pieces of metal and inside the goodie bag there was extra stuff. We got a bunch of end caps for it. 
you got these brackets here, which are kind of interesting. We'll get back to them in a second. Uh, we have these sort of sink, these sort of sink hole screws here that actually go into the holes of these guys here, as well as a, a few variety of screws for attaching things. Um, the one thing I want to point out about this, these are kind of neat. Uh, you'll note that, of course, these are L-shaped, and you'll see like one side of these has the 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 bevel goes all the way to the edge, and the other side it doesn't. Here they are loosely inserted into the long piece. As you can see here, this goes all the way to the edge there, and that's necessary so that we can slide that through on the other rails here. Because if we don't do that, if we put this the wrong way, do 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 do. You'll see that there's now the, the bevel from the other side now blocks it, so you couldn't slide this in correctly that way. So, just something to keep an eye out for. Okay, I've loosely assembled it. Uh, I haven't screwed anything in yet, so I'm holding it up because it'll fall if I don't. But in general, um, for the main support, I used two of the four uh, L brackets to connect the, uh, the, the longer pieces, pieces, and just a single one for the small pieces. So one at the bottom for, for, for balance, and then one here at the top. So the way assembly works is you use your same little Allen key here uh, to screw in these little nubs into the uh, into the holes on the L brackets, and that's how you assemble it. It actually comes with an extra nub, which is fantastic. So I have a spare just in case I break one or lose one, um, and uh, that's kind of great. I have a little trick to share while I'm on the topic of this. Um, if you're trying to figure out a nice, easy way to figure out how to center this. I noticed that the uh, the Allen key itself is almost almost like the perfect length from each side here. So if we do this, you'll see here that the Allen key kind of almost perfectly fits over the edge uh, when it touches the bracket like so, like right against the edge, not in the hole, but right against the, the bracket like that. So if you can if you can basically make this lean downward. If, it's, if there's enough room to turn it, even though without it being in the thing, um, that's about how where you want to fit it to almost perfectly center the uh, the bar in the middle of this guy here. Unfortunately, uh, when you do put it inside the hole, there is not enough clearance to, to rotate this uh, uh, without a little bit of a tilt, but uh, that's fine. That's fine. No big deal. But pretty easy way to get that centered. Okay, I've popped in all the covers, with the exception of this one here at the top. Uh, because there's actually a part that you're supposed to print that uh, that slides over here So I just want to make it easy to pull off but other than that popped in all the covers and so this is ready to go Nope, I was mistaken next step is actually to calibrate the printer. So and the way you do that is with a piece of paper and a bunch of fiddling with it um, If you check the manual, there's a it explains how you're supposed to do it uh, get yourself like I said a piece of paper and um, well, although there's a, there's a manual calibration button here, uh, I think the proper way is you're just supposed to, to to hit the move button, for example, and that'll raise it up to the uh, to the default value. And um, you want to get you probably want to do the middle, so hit the little five here, and the printer will make its way to the middle. And you want to start from there, like you want to start inching it downward. Uh, using this control, not until this is touching the bottom per se. Um, or I guess you could. You could you could inch it down all the way to the bottom. Like the manual suggests, uh, using this to, to bring it to the bottom. And what you're looking for is the, the the first moment where you feel tension on the paper. Like you'll notice as you as you inch it down using the little up and down arrows uh, or plus minus arrows uh, that you'll uh, it'll it'll move smoothly. Like if you just kind of like thrust the paper in and out, it'll move smoothly. That is until um, it's actually touching. And from what I understand, you want it for you want it at that first step where you feel resistance. It's a um, little more than I'm than I'm expecting, but there it is. So you apparently start with the middle. Um, then you want to pull it back a bit. Uh, they recommended uh, was it five millimeters or did they recommend uh, press the button five to move the middle? Uh, deduct five millimeters from the value. Okay, so they recommend pulling back five millimeters, uh, but it looks like my spread is actually a little more than 0.5, so you might want to pull back a little more than that. I ended up pulling back about 10, about 10, or, or, or sorry, uh, one one millimeter as of, instead of 0.1, or instead of 0.5, I went for one hole, so 10 units uh, as my base. And then I, I start from the middle and kind of worked my way around. 
Once you're done, be sure to hit set and then confirm and it will rise back up. You can pull your paper out. And now it's finally time to get started. As you can see, I decided to go with the white PLA that it comes with. I bought a whole bunch of other uh, white PLA, so we'll use the, the stuff that it comes with as uh, the test material. I had to reset the uh, the printer before the uh, before the extrusion test would work. So FYI, something to keep in mind. All right, since you always print a Benchy as your first print. I'm printing a Benchy. Say a little boat thing. Okay. Printer's flipping out. I guess it's... Oh, it's actually transferring at the moment, so there we go. It's sending all 247 layers. It's going to store it in internal memory so that we don't need the laptop anymore, but, you know, hey. Alright. Okay. Yep. Two hours. Okay, two hours for Benchy sounds fine. Alright, and that should be heating up. I'm using the standard PLA setting. I did read online, someone suggested that you should be using 200 for the PLA temperature, but I'm going to try the, the default, which is 210, just to, just to see it. Um, I'll print a few layers and just look at the result and then critique it, uh, the, the, how the layers look from there. Blah, we'll work this time. Yeah, it starts to get loopy, so I've tilted it over. Uh, it was doing better, I'll have to adjust it. At least until I get a proper spool holder. You start to see it form the Lego shape. I'm printing a variation of the Benchy that has a, uh, a Lego style base and nubs at the top so you can attach it to other Legos. You should be able to see the holes when you get just the right angle.
And she's done. Actually, uh, a little bit earlier than expected. Not bad. Of course, it's covered with support material and uh, the raft, so we'll have to have to crack it off and take a look. Come on, you can do it. Got it. All right. Not sure what happened here, but that's just support material, so might be fine under that. Okay. Now to peel off the supports. And after much scraping, we managed to get the benchy out. A lot of support material. Got a lot of bits. I just started throwing them in here. A lot of them to dig out. Got most of it. It's still like a little bit hidden up top here. I can't, I'm not going to find a camera angle that you'll be able to see it, but you know, it worked out really good. This surface is rather, this, this, this is really surprisingly smooth. I'm really impressed by that. I think it's a keeper. I think this is definitely a, uh, a 3D printer to be happy with. I did some little touch-ups on it. There were, there were a very a couple, like let's say two or three little rough nebs along along the front and sides. Uh, little bits, wherever there was support material basically, there was a chance of a little rough spot. But uh, for the most part, not many, not many little rough spots. I just kind of, you actually can sort of see a couple here. But I just kind of shaved them off with uh, this tool. Works really good. I'm super impressed. Pretty solid.